Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel MI Tutorials. In today's tutorial, we are diving into a common challenge faced by many Power BI users of how to showcase both selected and deselected values from a slicer on the same page. I have a sample training data set over here which has three columns, the employee name, the module name and the manager of that particular employee. The module name here refers to basically the module which that particular employee has completed. Now the scenario is that I have two different slicers here. One slicer here is the manager slicer and the second slicer here is of the module name. And when I choose a manager here, for example, manager one, and when I choose a module one here, of course, in this table over here, I'll be only able to see the data for the manager one and the module one. Now my requirement is that I need to have another table wherein when I select module one, I should be able to see the module one data in this table and the module two which is remaining or excluded from my selection, I should be able to see that in another slicer which is exactly that I have over here. So in this table, I have all the employees who have completed the module one. And in this table here, I have the employees who have completed module two. Now, let's say for example, I want to analyze or let's say the module two, module one and module two needs to be completed by the employees and the end date is near. And when I choose module two here, I should be able to see the data here of module two employees who have completed. And these are the employees who have not completed the module two. They are still stuck with module module one and I should be able to probably grab this data and send them a notification to complete their training module two. With the default slicer behavior in Power BI, you'll not be able to achieve this. So we will have to look for a workaround. So let's see how we can achieve this so that we can display both the selected and the deselected values from a slicer. So let's get started. So first of all, I have the table over here. I will have to create another calculated table here consisting of the distinct manager employee name and the module name information. So let's quickly do that. I'm going to go to the modeling tab and click on new table. I'm going to call this as distinct employee underscore employee is equals to let me quickly increase the size of this. I'm going to use the function called distinct here so that we get the distinct values. And then I'm going to use the summarize function here. And within the summarize function, the first argument here is to enter the table name, which in my case here is training followed by a comma. And now I should select the columns that I want in my table, which is the employee name. And then I want the manager. And I also want the module name in this case, followed by a comma and then the module name. I'm going to close the bracket here and confirm. I now have another disconnected table created as of now. So let's go back to our report now and let's start by creating a measure. I'm going to create a new measure and I'm going to call this as excluded employee is equals to and now I'm going to use the count rows function here, count rows. And now I'm going to pass in the filter function. And the first argument here within the filter function is to enter the table name. In this case, I'm going to enter the table name here, which is training followed by a comma. And then I'm going to say employee name is equals to selected value of the employee name from the distinct employee table and close the bracket again for the filter function, close the bracket again here for the count rows function and then click on confirm. And now let me quickly delete this table here and add a new table here. I'm gonna add the employee name from the distinct employee table, manager name and the module name over here. And let me add the excluded employee also into this particular table and change this back instead of a chart to the table. And now you can see that we are displaying, let me quickly format this table as well so that both appear the same. And now you can see that I have this particular table coming in from distinct employee table and this table here is coming in from the training table. And when I look at this table over here, the data that you see in this table is exactly the same here that you see here from the training table. And you can see that our measure that we created, which is count rows is returning the value of one. So we will have to make another change in our measure here. I'm going to use an if statement here and say, if my count rows value is greater than zero, then 
return 0 else return 1 I'm going to close the bracket here and confirm and now you can see that we have values 1 here on the top and you can see that all the rows are appearing now and if I scroll down I have values 0 as well and these are the same employees that are available here in this table who belong to manager 1 and who have completed the module 2 and now it's time for us to reverse this so let's go to the filter section here under excluded employee, I'm going to go to this drop down here, select is and then enter one here and click on apply filter. And now I have all the employees here who have not completed the module two. But notice that there's another change that has happened here when I got in this measure into this table. The problem here that I see is the manager is not getting filtered. So to filter the manager, because I have filtered for manager one, I should be able to only see the manager one details here. I should not be able to see the rest of the managers. Now let me quickly remove the excluded employee column from the table here and let's go back to our measure that we created and here I'm going to add another condition within the filter function and the condition here is going to be ampersand twice and I'm going to say selected value of the manager from my training manager table is equals to selected value of the manager from my distinct employee table. I'm going to click on confirm and then let's go back to our model view and now let's create a relationship between the training table and the distinct employee table using the manager field and then click on OK. Now that I have created a relationship, let's go back to our report view and when I select manager one here and I've selected module two and in this table, I'm now displaying all the employees who have completed the module two training and in this table, I'm displaying all the employees who have not completed the module 2 in other words I'm displaying all the employees here who have not been selected from this particular slicer and when I select manager 3 for example here I can now choose module 2 from my module 2 and in this included table I'm able to see all the employees that have module 2 and in my excluded table here I'm able to see all the employees who have completed the module 3. So this was a quick workaround to display both the selected and the non-selected values from a slicer in a single page in your Power BI report. I hope you enjoyed this video and found this valuable. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more Power BI tips and tricks and click on the notification bell to stay updated with all the latest content. If you have any questions or suggestions for future tutorials, drop them in the comment section below. Until then, happy analyzing.